The Ethereum merge is the biggest story in town right now, as the fruit of tireless core developers' labor receives its final preparations before taking its place as the centerpiece of an enormous blockchain banquet. Will it blend seamlessly or will it burst asunder and make a horrible mess of everything? If you only watch one video about the Ethereum merge, make sure it's this one, because trust me, ain't none sharper. Let's talk consensus mechanisms, how blockchains agree on whether an event actually happened. ETH currently uses proof of work, or another way you could think of it, proof of burnt energy. Miners use expensive hardware to compete to solve complicated problems to win the block reward. Not only does this spank a huge amount of energy, over 100 terawatt hours per year at current usage, but over time it becomes progressively harder and harder to mine a block. The equipment is also specialized. You need lots of rigs, you need cheap electricity, none of which is great for decentralization. Enter proof of stake. You stake Ether to activate software that verifies transactions in exchange for a transaction fee. Validators are selected randomly with the probability of selection proportional to the amount of ETH staked. Me, you, my mum, your mum, anyone can stake, anyone can participate. Well, let's qualify that. You, humble validator, need to stake 32 ETH in order to activate the validator software, and that is well over $100,000 now. But there are other ways to participate. Exchanges like Binance are running their own staking pools and still calling it ETH 2.0, Binance. Or you can trade ETH in for a staking derivative using Lido, which gives you a liquid asset while earning 4% on the stake. Now, it's not perfect, but it is much closer to a Web3 implementation than we've enjoyed up till now. POS consensus mechanisms come in all shapes and sizes, and the Ethereum community proposed a number of different recipes, such as Slasher, or Consensus by Bet. Ooh, nailed it. Before landing on the most delicious combo, Casper, the friendly finality gadget, all the way back in 2017. And yes, critics will bleat that it's taken so bloody long for those lazy developers to ship E2.0 because they're too busy melting the ice caps and making themselves unfathomably wealthy. Quick side note, we don't talk about ETH 2.0 anymore. Oh, no, 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 no. As of late 2021, core developers stopped using the terminology. Now we talk about two layers, the execution layer and the consensus layer. So, new consensus mechanism, proof of stake solves everything. We good to go, forward only. Well, not exactly. Thing is, it's much easier to design and launch a new system from scratch when you have no users. It is a far harder proposition when there are billions of dollars in value relying on the network to function properly. Any hiccup could be catastrophic, which is why developers have been testing, 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 and testing some more. To do that, they launched a key piece of ETH's POS infrastructure all the way back in December 2020, the Beacon Chain. That marks the beginning of phase zero of the Serenity update package. This has been running proof of stake in parallel with the existing Ethereum proof of work mainnet, although without smart contract functionality. And a one-way bridge has been accepting staking deposits with over 326,000 users active on the network. To date, 10.4 million ETH, or around $36 billion, or to put it another way, the entire Solana market cap, just on the beacon chain. The FOMO is clearly catching as Ether has been withdrawn from exchanges in vast quantities, bringing it to levels last seen back in summer 2018. And while you absorb that slice of deliciousness, let's hear from our sponsors. Zerion is mission control for Web3, giving users the ability to trade DeFi tokens, transfer assets across chains, and show off their NFT collections all in one place. Zerion offers a multi-chain experience with asset tracking and trading across seven networks, including Polygon, Optimism, Arbitrum, and BSC, so you'll never miss an opportunity waiting on gas fees to drop. NFT owners can also see their favorite collectibles and art as widgets on their iPhones or Apple Watches and send them to friends and family in a few clicks. Users can explore every corner of the metaverse with Zerion from their web, desktop, and mobile apps. So head to zerion.io to connect your wallet and get started today. The world of DeFi is so exciting right now, but it can also feel overwhelming. With all these options, it can feel impossible to know if you're getting the best prices. 
Matcha is here to help. Matcha searches across all the largest DEXs like Uniswap, SushiSwap, Curve, and more than 60 other exchanges to get you the best prices in one easy to use interface. It's simple. Just search for the tokens you want to trade. Select the token pair and let Matcha find you the best price. Why use one exchange when you can use them all? Start using Matcha to make trading in DeFi easy. Unstoppable Domains is the number one provider of NFT domains. With your unique NFT domains such as Camilla.crypto or Camilla.nft, you can replace your long, complex wallet addresses, verify ownership of your NFTs, log into Web3 apps, and join tens of thousands of people using them as their Twitter usernames. Better yet, with Unstoppable Domains, you don't have to worry about gas or renewal fees, and you own them forever. Go to unstoppabledomains.com and get your name, .crypto, .x, or .nft, or a range of other endings for as low as $5. So the final piece is to bring the entire history of the current ETH proof-of-work chain and merge it with this beacon chain to create a discrete shard in the new network, complete with smart contracts using proof-of-stake. Merging is no small task, of course, but there was big news recently with the announcement of a successful dry run on the Kiln testnet. Kiln is the final public testnet before the big one. Now, there is no set date for when the merge will take place, but it seems clear now it will be this year and it will probably be in a matter of months. But the recipe needs to be perfect. Once the merge is behind us, the next big challenge is sharding, which will spread the network load across 64 discrete shards. Now, bear in mind, chains like Elrond and Harmony feature four shards. 64? Well, that's going to be something else. Managing cross-shard communication, preventing single-shard takedowns, that's just two of the enormous challenges ahead. But that's, that's all in the future. So let's end with some important numbers. The new proof-of-stake Ethereum promises to lower energy consumption by 99.9%. Issuance and inflation will also be radically reduced. Ultrasound Money's Merge Simulator predicts supply will contract at minus 1.8% yearly, while new ether produced will plummet to just half a million a year. But that is, of course, just a simulation. Note here that the burn rate doesn't move, and that's because, sad to say, the merge will do pretty much next to nothing to the cost of transacting on Ethereum. So it's not all roses and cringeworthy, self-congratulatory circle jerk live streams about monetary premiums. But what about validators? How many of those do we need? Well, let's do some more numbers. For phase zero, there has been a minimum validator count of 16,384 validators. Trust me, that is a lot. For phase one and beyond, the recommended minimum validators per committee is 128. So in order for all shards to learn each other's state on every slot across 64 shards, that would mean 262,144 validators and 8,388,608 total ETH staked. So that's the merge when two become one. And like the humble tomato, ETH really is the foundational building block for more Web3 recipes than you could shake a cocktail stick at, which is why we really need it to go smooth. Coming at you hot and fresh out of the kitchen, this was the Defiant. Trust me, ain't none. <laughs>